Although atmospheric hazards in confined spaces are often the first ones we think of, there are many other non-atmospheric hazards that must be considered. These spaces are not designed for someone to simply walk into, so just entering a confined space may be challenging for some individuals. The physical size of the worker or the bulkiness added due to special PPE may exclude some workers from entering. Even if a worker is as agile as a cat, he or she may still struggle with entering or working in a confined space due to phobias like claustrophobia, which is the fear of closed or narrow spaces, or arachnophobia, which is a fear of spiders, or musophobia, which is a fear of rodents, not moose. Fear of heights and or vertigo may also be a problem if entering or exiting requires ascending to or descending from heights. The physical condition of the worker can also be a concern based on the work activity, such as climbing ladders or having to wear heavy equipment. Engulfment is another hazard that must be considered. If you enter spaces like grain elevators or hoppers that are used to store materials, you need to be aware that the material may appear to be able to support you, but in truth, it may act like quicksand and draw you down and suffocate you. Even if the material is able to support your weight, if it begins to be drawn out of the space from below, you may still be engulfed and suffocate. Substances entering from the top may also bury workers. If we look at a well or a tank as another example, water or other liquid filling the space may drown you if you were unable to escape or keep your head from becoming submerged. If you were in a head-down position, you were even more vulnerable if liquids enter the space. Workers in confined spaces servicing equipment, machinery, pipelines, or process systems that contain hazardous energy can be seriously injured or killed if the energy isn't properly controlled and isolated. You could be trapped or crushed by augers, mixers, agitators, or conveyor belts. Noise is also a concern in confined spaces. Sounds are often amplified, so any operating equipment inside may make it difficult for you to communicate with co-workers. Even with no noise being generated within the space, once you are inside, it may be difficult for you to communicate with a worker right outside the space. Exposure limits are also set in legislation for noise. In Alberta, these limits are given in Schedule 3, Tables 1 and 2. The decibel reading and exposure duration will determine whether hearing protection is required, and if so, what class and grade is necessary. Keep in mind that anyone connected to the workplace can have stricter requirements to protect workers, so you must know your site-specific rules. Not only can your ability to hear and communicate be affected by noise in the space, you may also have to deal with a diminished ability to see. Since confined spaces were not meant for regular human occupancy, often their lighting is very poor. Poor lighting can hinder your ability to maintain a safe distance from equipment, or see and recognize other hazards, and may even make it difficult for you to find the exit for a quick escape, if needed. Temperature is another factor that needs to be considered. The location of the space, along with the equipment housed or used inside, can cause it to become very hot. Depending on the temperature inside the space and the protective clothing being worn, workers may be subject to heat stress. On the other hand, if the space is uninsulated or unheated on a chilly winter's day, the cold temperatures may make tasks more difficult. Whether it's bulky gloves or shaking hands and stiff fingers, otherwise simple tasks could cause injuries. You also need to consider possible radiation exposure. Ultraviolet or infrared sources from welding, cutting or brazing, or X-ray systems used for inspection and monitoring may be present and create radiation hazards. Naturally occurring radioactive material, or norms, which are found in the ground and rock may also be a concern if concentrated. Gravity is something that no one can defy. Anything that is not secured has the potential to fall. If you are working below ground in a pit, sewer, or deep trench, there is often work that is happening directly above you. Falling objects are a hazard if the work above is unguarded. Speaking of falling objects, the walls of the excavation themselves may fall in or collapse if not secured properly. 
If corrosive chemicals are used or stored within the space, workers entering it may be exposed to harmful substances. Residue may still be present if the space wasn't completely emptied, cleaned, or purged. Leaks, spills, and condensation can make walking surfaces slippery and increase the risk of slipping and falling. Since these spaces are not regularly occupied, housekeeping standards may be lacking, resulting in hazards not being identified and eliminated as quickly. Entering and exiting the space itself may be a hazard depending on the configuration. For example, if access to the space requires descending or ascending a steep ladder, you may be at risk of falling just to get in or out of the space itself. Speaking of which, impeded escape and rescue must also be taken into consideration and planned for prior to entering the space. Emergency responders are usually laden with heavy and bulky equipment, so limited and impeded access will make rescue operations more challenging. Because these spaces are often cramped and difficult to maneuver within and exit from, hazards are often magnified. Confined space work is necessary, but can be dangerous if the hazards associated with it are not controlled. In the next chapter, we'll explore the methods used by employers to control the many hazards associated with entering and working in confined spaces.